So in this video, I'm going to cover the concept of crossover analysis. And crossover analysis is a tool that we use to assess the relative strengths of different options. In this case, we're doing it relative to choosing equipment. You can do it relative to choosing a location. You can do it particularly with just about anything. And what you look at is the trade-off between fixed costs and variable costs. So the higher fixed costs you have, the lower variable costs you should have, otherwise the option becomes uh, very easy. Uh, but in this circumstance, we have a firm that has a contract for 130,000 units of a new product and they have three alternatives for equipment. General purpose equipment, which has a fixed cost of $150,000, so it's the lowest fixed cost, but a variable of $10 per unit. And, uh, and so flexible manufacturing is $350,000 fixed, but a lower variable cost at eight. And dedicated automation is $950,000 fixed, but a lower variable cost at six. So you can get a variety of different questions. First, find the crossover points. The crossover points are the points at which the costs are equal. At 130,000 units, which process would you choose? So doing the analysis and then understanding what it tells you. And at 130,000, what is the total cost of each process? So let's begin and, and, and take a look at that. Uh, the first thing I would say is if there was a fourth process that had fixed of uh, 200,000 and variable of 11, you could do the analysis, but in that circumstance, if you compare it to the first, which has fixed of 150,000 and variable of 10, there is no point at which this one will be cheaper, right? Because if you have a graph, 150,000 and then the slope is 10, that's, how, that's the total cost curve. And then you have fixed of 200,000, but you have a higher slope, it goes up like that, that will never cross this, it will never be lower than that, so we can just easily rule that one out. So if there's any of the technologies that you choose from in which there is a single alternative that has a higher fixed cost and a higher variable cost than any one of them, you can rule them out. That's not the case in this circumstance. We have increasing fixed costs here and decreasing uh, variable costs. So that, that's just something to, uh, that, that in some cases you'll be asked uh, <coughs> to rule one out and that's how you would do it. Excuse me. So let's look at the crossover points. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat. So first, between general purpose and flexible. <coughs> so X is equal to the volume at the crossover point. And so the crossover point is the point at which those costs are the same. So we can do 150,000, which is the fixed cost, plus 10x is equal to 350,000 plus 8x. And so we can then subtract 150 from this side and, and we'll get 200,000 and we can subtract 8x from this side and we'll get 2x is equal to 200,000, x is equal to 100,000. So that means that general purpose is cheaper 
up until 100,000 units and then flexible is cheaper. And at 100,000 units you're indifferent between the two. The cost is the same. So then the second crossover point is between flexible and dedicated and we do it the same way 350,000 plus 8x and this is a different x I'm just using x in here for the algebra is equal to 950,000 plus 6x and you can do x2 if, if it makes it clearer to you and then I'll subtract 6x from this side and get 2x is equal to 600,000 because I subtract the 350 from that side so x is equal to 300,000 so we can then given that we know that the general purpose equipment is preferred less than 100,000 100,000 to so between 100,000 and 300,000 the flexible is preferred and 300,000 less than dedicated so if if you are greater than 300,000 you will uh, you will choose uh, the dedicated automation. So at 130,000 units, we would choose uh, the flexible. You will notice that I did not do. Uh, a crossover point between uh, uh, the general purpose and the dedicated and that is because even though they will eventually cross as soon as we know that there is something cheaper than a unit then then something we, we can rule it out so uh, this one is at a hundred and fifty thousand and it goes up at a slope like that the next one's at three hundred and fifty thousand and it goes up at a slope like that and the next one is at 950,000 and it goes up at a slope like that it's not perfectly to scale so you can see this one and this one cross but they cross at a point that we're not interested in because here is a hundred thousand and here is three hundred thousand so this one is cheaper until a hundred thousand and then the next one is cheaper the flexible and so we don't worry about that crossover point, we just worry about this crossover point where it is going to be the lowest. So that's why <coughs> we do it uh, that way. The last thing, question was total cost. And that's pretty straightforward. Total cost for the general is equal to 150,000 plus 10x is equal to 150,000 plus 10 times 130,000 is equal to 1,450,000 total cost flexible is equal to 350,000 plus 8 times 130,000 equals 1.39 so that validates the crossover analysis we did before. It's a way you can test your work. For dedicated is equal to 950,000 plus 6 times 130,000 is equal to 1.730. So means our crossover analysis was correct and the flexible is the cheapest. 
So, the couple of things uh, sort in ascending order of uh, of fixed cost. That means descending order of variable cost. If you have a single one that has a, an alternative that is lower in both fixed and variable costs, uh, you can do the one that's higher and throw it out. And otherwise, you do the crossover points and figure it out. Sometimes it's nice drawing a graph like the one I did to help you visualize it. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, it becomes a relatively uh, straightforward process. You can also do... Just hang on here. Crossover analysis as break-even. And in that circumstance, you compare cost to revenue. So let's just do a quick example of that. Just making sure we can still see uh, an orthodontist estimates that adding two new chairs will increase fixed costs by $150,000. Variable cost is $1,000 per patient. Each additional patient generates $3,000 per year in additional revenue. She estimates that they will get 200 new patients. So if you look at it, that here we're doing crossover analysis, but we're looking at total revenue, which is a straight line that starts at zero, and it goes up by 3,000 per patient. And then we have a, a total cost curve that starts at 150,000 and then goes up by $1,000 per patient and they'll cross over and that is the break-even point. Below this below this the investment is not profitable and above it it is profitable. So that's ex essentially what we're doing here. So we're doing some quick math crossover point Three thousand times X. This is revenue, so there's no fixed cost. Is equal to one hundred and fifty thousand plus a thousand X. So then two thousand X is equal to one hundred and fifty thousand. X is equal to seventy five patients. So at 75 patients, revenue will equal exactly cost, and we know that cost will go, will go up at a smaller, slower rate than revenue is, so in this circumstance, it is worth making the investment. Pretty straightforward. Um, then uh, another way of doing it is you can also look at uh, break even is where profit equals zero price of X 
minus variable cost x minus fixed cost is equal to zero px minus vx equals f x is equal to f over p minus v. It's exactly the same thing. That's how you can use crossover analysis for break-evens uh, and also for choosing which technology uh, to adopt. Uh,